Oh, the joy that forgiveness and love bring and peace into your life. Ah, the wonderful praise reports that God is giving me. And the awesome part of it is, you know, lives were just filled with problems and troubles when they would give me a call. And there would be a feeling of impossibility, not my feeling, but for some, some of them, the amount of years that they went through this trauma, the amount of years that they suffered and endured these things. And as soon as the truth and understanding came for them, you know, uh, the enemy is given so much credit. <laughs> and I'm sitting here and I'm laughing because these people overcame everything without me having to uh, rebuke any devil. <laughs> it is, he get, doesn't get glorified in my ministry. And I just, I just love it. I received so many awesome testimonies and, and, uh, you know, uh, in praising God now, uh, God gets all the glory for what he has done in these lives. The Lord has changed them so much in just, uh, uh, you know, like one day. It's just, it's just phenomenal what God can do with the truth. And I think about the Bible saying the truth he is the truth the way and the life and how god comes into your life and gives you life through the truth oh so many of you that contact me and and tell me and sometimes i read it and sometimes i see it by gmail and sometimes i hear it by phone you can't wait to call me and tell me what God has done in your life. And this brings such a joy. The tears that I have cried have been out of joy. And uh, because I knew that this was going to happen for you, I understood it. But the greatness of the joy is when I actually witness what God has moved upon your life and done. When I hear your voice, it is so so wonderful. And I got a message just saying, uh, <laughs> sending real tight hugs. Well, in the spirit, I feel all of that. And I just want all of you to know that oh, words can't express the joy of what God has done in changing lives. I've watched it so many times in the Lord where he has done this you know, one-on-one -on -one with a lot of people. And it's just happening so fast. So today the Lord was bringing to my remembrance, my daughter, bringing the words to my remembrance that if you bring up a child in the way, in the way that they should go, when they are old, they will not depart from it. You know, the awesome power of God and his word and how that rang true for this life. <laughs> and I, well, a month ago, it hurt so bad to miss her. But now the joy has kicked in. The joy has kicked in that she's with the Lord. The joy has kicked in. <laughs> and I, and I appreciate God. I watched God do so many miracles in her life. And it, it was phenomenal to see a horse rodeo buck her off and have her land on the ground. And uh, when she landed, you could see she, I could see the angels kept her from getting hurt. And when she landed, it was like landing on a pillow. And she, she, <laughs> she stopped pausing, checking out her body, like waiting for the pain, waiting for everything to happen to hurt her. <laughs> and there was nothing there. The shock that there was 
nothing there. And seeing that so many times, because a lot of people are afraid of allowing their children to ride horses. But when you know that God called your child with that talent, then you trust in, in the Lord to do that. So, <laughs> so I have so much joy. And then the people that, that send me letters. One woman was wise enough to send me a letter in big font. But <laughs> I prefer the cards. I'll tell you why. Because my husband gets to read them to me. And it brings tears to his eyes to hear what you have to say about the Lord in me. It, it literally brings tears to his eyes in joy. So you have no idea of the things that you say. I'm not the only one hearing them. It's him. And when he hears your testimony about how thankful you are and what God has done for you, it, it does bring tears to his eyes. So this is, I don't, I don't know how to say it or get the message to you, but when you work all of your life to be dedicated to others and you finally, finally see the fruit of it, you finally hear it with your own ears, you finally see it in written words, ah, oh, there is nothing that can compare with it. And the power of forgiveness to all others that that don't understand is all I could say. It gives me a picture of what God said in the end of his life. And that is, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. And he knows that there are people who do not understand what he is doing with the children of God, what he is doing to bring life back into them. These people, I could only say that they listened, they, they learned. They didn't have to take months and months to do it. They listened in a, in a couple, uh, you know, one, one video, they listened to going back to loving God to going back to Jesus Christ, to forget everything that people have told them and go back to the one that died for them. In doing that, it released a power in their life that is untold. To uh, not focusing on the problems that they had. Uh, to be willing to listen. And, and uh, <laughs> I'm thinking... You know, my husband's watching me spend hours with some people, and he's he's listens to some of the conversations. Uh, he doesn't want to know everybody's problems because he can't handle it. He's only a man, but uh, but he does enjoy. And I've always known that whenever he knew I was helping somebody, he would get great joy himself. Whenever he could hear on the other side, uh, someone testified to it so it would just bring great joy to him to know that this was going on and uh <laughs> so uh, i have so many i can't just say threefold uh things that that come out of all this it's just it's like uh an outpouring an outpouring of the love of God, the grace of God, the power of God, the wisdom of God, the truth of God, all of those things pouring into your life and into the life of others through one thing, through the blood of Jesus Christ, through his reality. And, and there's nothing worse for a person when they have no reality of him. They hear this and they hear that, but it's not real. And they'll tell you all of their life, this is how they thought. This is what they searched for. And they could not find it. And when they learn and listen for just a few minutes of the wisdom that God has given you, and it changes them. It changes their thinking, right? Because the, the Holy Spirit 
Jesus Christ, the life, oh, hallelujah, is right there resonating in their soul, working in their minds, and enabling them to overcome every obstacle, no matter how bad it is. And all God had to do was redirect their thinking, redirect their feelings, redirect the, everything they had been taught in life. Like I said, you bring up a child in the way it should go, and when he was, is old, he will not depart from it. The Lord has used me so wonderfully to be able to speak to pe people and right before your eyes you see the hearts and minds flip over and change and you know from that day on they will never be the same for they heard the truth which is Jesus Christ for they heard the righteousness and the goodness and the love of God and and it, and it changed their minds and when that mind flipped over and entered into to the heart and changed their heart, wow. To experience that as somebody that brings forth the truth is phenomenal. To, to literally watch it with your eyes because you have nothing to do with it. All you're doing is giving a message that God has given you for every soul that is hungry, every soul that needs it. And there is no greater joy than to know that this is what God has done in your life. And uh, <laughs> so those of you that wrote me letters today and gave me really tight hugs, thank you. Thank you for remembering me. Those of you that called me and said, I can't wait to tell you. I can't. I couldn't wait. And we wound up with you telling me for, for hours on the phone. And we, what a joy. I mean, it was, it was precious. So thank you. Thank you for doing that. Say, uh, and those of you that would send me Gmails and tell me, you know, that from the day God sent you and God told you that your life had changed. And I think about the one yesterday, I think that told me how confused she was because everything was aimed at, uh, you have this problem because the devil did this, or you had that problem because this demon was doing this. And <laughs> giving glory to the enemy is what they do. They don't realize that God is the one to be glorified. God is the one to be lifted up. And when they hear the voice of God, this is why God says, my sheep will hear my voice and they will follow no other. And there are like one, I, and I would tell you, he's got an IQ of 150. And you know, that's a genius IQ. And he said from the, I searched through hundreds of videos and hundreds of people. And he said, when I heard you, I knew, I knew instantly the wisdom of God. That was wonderful. And it isn't that he didn't like this one. We didn't talk about that. We didn't talk about what he didn't get off of other people. We talked about what God did and what in, in searching the wisdom, searching out the wisdom of God is what he was doing. And the joy of knowing that the Lord used me through that wisdom. Because you see, wisdom is something that can be recognized. You can have so much knowledge. You could be so intelligent. But <laughs> this is a very wise, wise 22-year-old. Because he, he was searching for wisdom. He wasn't searching for anything else but the wisdom of Jesus Christ. <laughs> and he found it. He found it in the Lord. Not in me. He found it in the Lord. This is so wonderful. I just had to share with all of you the wonders of Jesus Christ. 
This is why he is called Wonderful and Prince of Peace. For when he does come in wisdom and knowledge and understanding with what he is all about, head knowledge gets mixed with love and wisdom. And, and it gets, the head knowledge is, it can be dead by itself. It can let you be dead. You, you get it into your head. Many people tell me this. You get it into your head and you know this to be true, but it's never mixed in the heart. It's never mixed with what needs to, to be mixed with. You know, it's never mixed with your faith. So many people are virtuous, literally virtuous. And they, the Bible says, uh, add to your, your uh, virtue, faith, and then add to your faith, knowledge. You know, Jesus was virtuous. The woman that touched the hem of his garment touched him seeking for virtue. So that proved she wasn't necessarily just seeking for a, for a healing of her body. She wanted to be more like him, virtuous. And uh, the beauty, the beauty of the gospel, it's so beautiful when you really see it. When you go, you know, when God goes far beyond your faults, and sees your needs and and you grasp a hold of that and it changes you the power of god is so real the power of the word is awesome it's it's the word okay so you pound it into your brain and and you take it with knowledge and you you read it and read it and read it and yet there's nothing mixing in by faith. And the, the Word of God speaks about this, about it not being mixed with faith. It's not being mixed with the reality of God. That's faith. The reality that he's really here. When you invited him, he really came. And I look, there are people who are afraid to believe that because they have been deceived for so long. And they have been lied to for so long and told many things. And so therefore it makes them frightened, which is understandable because that's the way it goes in, in the flesh. That's the way it goes in, in the human heart and mind. But man was created for a relationship with God. Adam is proof of that. <clears throat> he walked and talked with God in the cool of the evening. The proof of it is in Genesis. Let us make man in our Im image. So what does mankind have? And I won't discard a woman with that because he did say, male and female made he them. And he called them man. That was amazing. He didn't call him man and her man. It is what he called them. He called them man. It was amazing because when God speaks something, it comes into being. He didn't say he called them male and female. It said he made them male and female, and then he called them man meaning mankind. That's amazing. And that tells you how God looks at a woman. He looks at her as equal to man. And the curses that fell upon her are easily broken in Christ Jesus. And not that she is not to submit to her husband. Of course she will. But God put a love in a woman's heart that far surpasses Anybody having to tell her to love her husband. And if her husband truly had Jesus Christ within him, she would fall to her feet and worship him. But the force of hell, the force of man, the force of evil, trying to force people 
into subjection to what they think is true, to what they believe, is a very, very difficult <laughs> because you can't, you can't, uh, you can't deceive God inside of a person. You know, when the word of God comes, even by, uh, even through the deception of false doctrine, even through deception of anything, the word of God is Jesus Christ. It's the word. And your mind and your heart can twist it in many different ways and just make it manipulate it and do what you want to with him. But you never change him. And you never change the witness in the spirit that comes to the, his sheep. That's why he said, my sheep will hear my voice and they will follow no other. It is a spiritual experience between God and man. And the wonderful thing about it is God surrounds himself with, a, with obscurity. He doesn't want everybody to see and know him enough to find his judgments and understanding if they're not worthy. You say, well, everybody is, well, nobody is worthy, actually, not me or you. None of us are worthy. But in the Old Testament, when you look at some of these Psalms about how hidden God was, it's because there were people that he knew would take the word and twist it, take what he said and turn it, and make it according to them, which is written in Romans, holding the truth in unrighteousness, keeping it back from others by what they think. That's where your hypocrisy is born. They stand at the door, which is Jesus Christ. They won't let you go in. All of their words will be according to their false doctrine. And they, and they won't let you go in. And they won't go in themselves. But the person who loves Jesus Christ and has Jesus Christ within them has a forgiveness of kindness and joy, has an understanding. Forgive them, they know not what they do. So even though God does not like what they do, he doesn't hate anybody. Even though God does not like what was said or what was done, he doesn't hate them. So the the joy of forgiveness, Ooh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. The joy of forgiveness inside of you is so rich. And this is why I teach that to you. Because once you get that, once you really understand, once you get close enough to God to understand, then the richness is there and nothing can pluck it out. There's no circumstance, situation, there is nothing that can pluck that out of you. There won't be any desire to talk, target somebody and hate them and hurt them and, and pay them back and resent them. It's just not there. Oh, man will always accuse you. If you look this way or you look that way or you look this way, they'll say, you did this. <laughs> well, because... The flesh is filled with the enemy and he's the accuser of the brethren. And the conscience that is seared with a, uh, an iron rod. I mean, you just sear something. That conscience, it is like it says in Ephesians, it's past all feeling. They just ugh, get rid of all feelings that are good towards someone. And they go with the word and plow into it, into destruction. And the enemy is the destroyer. I always think of Luke 9, when the disciples asked God, do you want us to call fire from heaven? You know, the fire of God is very real. The fire of God 
when he comes, he doesn't come to destroy. Do you realize when fire of God comes upon a person, it comes to burn out sin. That's what he comes for. People lack an understanding. And when I say they're playing with fire, they're playing with that knowledge. I know of people that the fire of God just come and visit them and, and just search through them. And it was phenomenal. And it frightened them. Because the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. The Lord came upon me one day and the heat was tremendous and the surge of the fire of God. And after a few moments of that, he said, Marion, I just burned out. I just burned out the residue that was left after you searching me. So it's nothing to be afraid of when you feel it. Don't be afraid. Because it's God. It's God that wants to take what you've been seeking for. You have been seeking for him to get rid of this stuff. So let him do it. And thank him when it's done. The fear of God is, is the beginning of wisdom. You're looking for wisdom. And, and in order to find wisdom, you have to find out that he's for real. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God can be a statement that you be afraid that you will be completely destroyed. But when he says that, that could mean something in your life in a million different ways. Because he can come upon you in all of his glory. And that is so fearful. But does it kill you? No. It literally burns out the dross. It literally transforms you. And when you have that experience with him like that, you're a different person when he gets done. I know some of these things are hard to be understood. But that's why I teach about experience with God being so important. Because it changes you. It renews you. It brings you back to the place of love that you once had at that moment that you give your life to Christ. That moment is the finest hour of love between you and God. And he wants you back to that. 